Hi, I'm John, the MedPot Combat Engineer Termel, and this is part two of the supplementary written representations on Svetkopoulos submitted to Justice Michael Tullock of the Superior Court of Justice of Ontario Criminal Division in the case of Terry Parker, appellant against Her Majesty the Queen, trying to get the return of the marijuana that had been seized and turned over to the police, seized by Canada Post. So, the rest of the case. That's R versus Barron, February 2nd, and that's case 131900 in BC Supreme Court. <clears throat> now, the highlight of the decision, in her reasons that the Crown couldn't find, but I found online, is Paragraph 127, pretty long reasons too. Adopting the reasoning in Hitzig and Svetkopoulos, further bolstered by the evidence before this court, I find Section 41b1 and 54.1 of the MMAR contrary to Section 7 of the Charter. Remedies, paragraph 129. As the matter now stands, the Federal Court of Appeal in Svetkopoulos declared that Section 41b1 invalid and refused to suspend that declaration. The case is now under appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada, and we know, of course, it's now over. Uh, paragraph 133. Consistent with the reasoning in Schachter, uh, that these provisions, unduly restricting DPLs from growing for more than one ATP, or growing in concert with two other DPLs, are hereby severed from the NMAR as unconstitutional. 135. The government, in my view, will need time to put in place appropriate monitoring and enforcement mechanisms in relation to such compassion clubs. Thus, it is appropriate to stay the effect of this declaration of invalidity for one year. So, the flaw continues to remain in the MMAR, and all prosecutions late since April 23rd, 2009, last week, have to be bogus, right? Why don't they stop? So, I point out, not just one, but two flaws in the MMAR, making the CDSA prohibition invalid, according to the on-off reasoning in JP. Long odds in finding a doctor is third flaw in MMAR. Also added to the second flaw to the discredit of the MMAR filed by Justice Konigsberg, this court has the opportunity to put a third nail in the MMAR coffin, that is of the long odds in finding a doctor when a way should have been legislated ensuring all doctors participate. If Terry Parker's doctor can prescribe heroin without fear, why can't he prescribe herb without fear? Krieger invalidation ground strengthened. 14. Please notice the wording of the order staying execution pending further order of this court. This is the exact wording used by Alberta Justice O'Leary in staying the effect of the Krieger invalidation of Section 7 cultivation prohibition pending the repeal. Crown Attorney David Frankel then raised the novel argument that the Krieger invalidation never took effect because the stay pending further order survived the final order upon dismissal of the repeal and still needed to be lifted. Of course, once an appeal is dismissed and the court becomes functus officio, no further motions may be made. So Frankel's foible results in the Krieger invalidation being stayed forever. When they win, we lose, and when we win, they don't lose. 15. Now here at the Supreme Court of Canada, the execution of the Svetkopoulos invalidation of the MMAR was stayed pending further order of the court, which I maintain is but a standard phrase, not a prime order. Now that the Supreme Court of Canada has dismissed the repeal, can the Crown now argue the Frankel foible that the stay pending further order still needs to be lifted? even though motions can't be filed after court's functus officio, and ergo, the Svetkopoulos invalidation is stayed forever, a la Krieger. 16. Of course, I doubt they will dare raise the Frankel foible to argue the Svetkopoulos decision remains stayed forever because a stay pending further, further order with the court survives the final order with the court and still needs to be somehow lifted. The Frankel foible has been exposed by this analogous situation at the Supreme Court of Canada as baseless and bolsters appellant's ground that the prohibitions on cultivation and possession were invalidated by Krieger in early 2003, making for a seamless interval of invalidity between Terry Parker Day 2001 and now. Crown won't amend Criminal Code of Canada. 
The Ministry of Justice did not amend the criminal code to reflect the Parker invalidation in 2001, nor the Creeker invalidation in 2003, nor to reflect the Svetkopoulos decision. And I've heard exemptees have a letter from the minister saying it will not be amended to comply. Yet Canada's lawyers and judges say it's still in the code, so it must still be valid. 18. Remedies sought. In the Crown's own words, Appellant Terry Parker asks this court for an order declaring the Federal Court of Appeals decision as creating a similar period of retrospective invalidity dating back to December the 3rd, the date that Section 41B1 was reintroduced into the MMAR, or in the alternative, dating back to August the 1st, 2001, the date the Parker invalidation of the Section 4 possession offense took place, or dating back to July 1st, 1983, when the Charter enshrined the rights violated by the Pro Prohibition. Cease and desist until Parliament reenacts. 19. Appellant asks this court to order the Crown to cease and desist all marijuana prosecutions, not until Health Canada fixes the MMAR to turn the penal statute back on, but until Parliament reenacts a new constitutionally valid prohibition with a new constitutionally valid exemption. Ending cops and gardeners of national importance. After saddling over 100,000 Canadians with bogus convictions during the Parker interval of invalidity, the Crown has now managed to saddle another 300,000 Canadians with bogus criminal records during the Svetkopoulos interval of invalidity. The stupendous incompetence or criminality must end. You have the power and the chance to exercise the full measure of your power on what the Crown keeps arguing is an issue of national importance. This court can end this insane war of cops and gardeners and focus police resources on real crime while saving all those with medical need who are too afraid of the system to apply. Expunge criminal records. Appellant further asks this Honorable Court to order the Crown to expunge from their criminal records all the bogus convictions registered since December the 3rd, 2003, or August the 1st, Terry Parker Day, 2001, or July 1st, Charter Day, when we got our rights. 22. Genocide of the Sick. Finally, in the name of the four known epileptics a day who die, unlike Terry Parker, who supposedly has a right to marijuana, and who would not have died had they had a joint in their possession when they felt the aura of their seizure coming on over the past many years, end this insane genocide against the sick who need this medication for healing, and against the healthy who could use it for prevention of all the things it's good for once we've got them, but before we've got them. Dated Brantford on Saturday, May 2nd, 2009, agent for the appellant, Don C. Termel. So, isn't it incredible how all these government of, these Ministry of Justice lawyers have managed to saddle hundreds of thousands of Canadians with bogus convictions because of their crooked arguments, things they make up, things that go against all past judgments to just basically keep the status quo going. And even though we now have the Svetkopoulos decision at the top stating the MMAR is dead and the Crown's fears are stated plainly in the background that the law of, against possession has been dead for the last six years and of course you're not going to hear it on the major media, right? Because they're part of the cover-up. So we are telling you the truth about this horrible scandal. So we could always say that the Parker scandal was the bogus 100,000 bogus convictions they wouldn't be covered up. And then now the Svetkopoulos scandal, well that's the six years worth, worth of bogus convictions they're going to have to deal with. But there's a new scandal starting since the Svetkopoulos decision when the Justice Minister knows they got no leg to stand on, nothing to rely on, and they're not telling the police to stop the busts. So that's the current new ongoing scandal of bogus busts done by the Ministry of Justice and responsible with, from the ministry, by the Minister of Justice for not informing the police that there's no law against the possession of marijuana in Canada since Svetkopoulos. So, three big scandals. 100,000 people, 300,000 people, now maybe 1,000 people in the last uh, week, okay, who shouldn't have been busted since the Svetkopoulos decision. And it's going to go up four or five thousand a week. Is that right? Oh, a month. Sorry. Anyway, it's big numbers nevertheless. So we should fix it. Finally, 
This was the flyer from my abolitionist party. And on the right hand side, you can see the marijuana plant trying to break free from the bars. So people think I only started pushing the legalization of marijuana in 2000 when I came back from the United Nations Unilets resolution. But I've been pushing for the legalization of a good herb for a lot longer than that. This was 1993.